Welcome to the digital age. Finally, a plasma cutter that's more than just a dial and a gauge on it. This thing is absolutely insane, and I've got to show you some of the really unique features that make me wonder why I went this long without having a plasma cutter. Right, so a bunch of people have asked me over the years, Justin, why don't you bother using a plasma cutter? It would probably make your life so much easier. Or, how have you survived this long without having a plasma cutter? Do I need a plasma cutter? Should I get a plasma cutter? I have to have a plasma cutter. Trust me, I've heard them all. Well, the truth be told here, I've owned a handful of plasma cutters over the years, but to be perfectly honest with you, when times got tough or money got a little bit tight, they were the first things to go. The reason why? They were nothing more than a box with a dial and a gauge on it. That's all it was to me. Sometimes they would, you know, do their job just right. Sometimes they would do their job not that great, or I had to buy all this, you know, tons of different consumables and all kinds of other stuff. So, you know, they were the first things to go because in my brain, they never really justified spending thousands of dollars on something that just didn't really do it for me. Well, I think the good people over at ESOB actually uh, might have heard that story a time or two, and they challenged me to change my mind about plasma cutting. They sent over the Thermal Dynamics Cutmaster 60i, also known as the Beast. While I always maintain skepticism and everything else like that, I did absolutely put this to the test and no different than any other video done by TFS here and I'm going to tell you every single thing that I do and don't like about the Thermal Dynamics Cutmaster 60i. Now straight out of the box you'll get yourself a Thermal Dynamics Cutmaster 60i, an SL60 QD torch, an earth lead, water separator, some consumables, and a really awesome user manual that's very, very detailed and easy to read. Pretty much everything you need to know, including how to use it, is in that book. The machine design is very tough, rugged and robust thanks to this exoskeletal cage design and portability is a breeze with four handles to grab a hold of and move it around. Machine setup is a piece of cake thanks to this dense connector on the ground side and the torch itself, the lead, is also a quick connect. Now if you remember my other videos about liking to store my machines without the leads attached, this definitely scores some extra points in my book. Now when you fire it up, you'll see the revision number pop up on the screen as it does its systems check and then it shows a checksum number which quickly helps service personnel identify a problem should you have one. This is one of those unique features that minimizes downtime, one that I actually really like. The giant LED interface is very easy to see in all lighting conditions and thanks to only two knobs it's extremely easy to use. The upper knob will adjust your amperage if you turn it or if you push on it it will toggle between five different operation modes. Run mode is your basic operation, pull the trigger to go, let go to stop, pretty simple. Then we have latch mode. Now latch mode keeps the arc burning after you let go of the trigger to reduce fatigue. It will then terminate after it pulls away and senses there is nothing left to cut or you depress the trigger again. Next is RAR for Rapid Auto Restart. This is basically a system mode that keeps the pilot arc burning through large gaps or anything else that keeps the cut very uninterrupted. It's a really nice feature to have when you're cutting through, say, like expanded metal or gratings or anything with large gaps where you need to restart quickly. After that comes a really cool gouge mode, which I'll show you what that means, how it works, all that good stuff in just a moment. Finally, we have our purge mode, which basically sends the air through without initiating the arc. Really nice feature. Now we can move on to our lower knob. Now the lower knob is meant for adjusting your air pressure per the lead length that's attached to the machine. And you can also press on it to toggle the different lead lengths. But as far as adjusting your pressure is concerned, all you gotta do is stick it in the green. Every single time you change up your torch or your lead length, it will automatically tell you where it needs to be. Again, just stick it in the green. Now you basically have two different manual torches, the SL60 and the SL100. And all you have to do is set up the proper lead length for which one you are using. If you use the SLV mechanism, torch it will automatically detect it. Seriously, it does not get any easier than this. Now the timing of the Cutmaster 60i showing up could not have been better. I have a serious project that I have to actually finish up here for our new classes at TFS. Now this in particular is a car. Well, it's less of a car than it used to be at least, but I did use the Cutmaster 60i for the majority of the cut work on this. And I, it's a really great way to test it out just because it's not easy to use a plasma cutter on a unitized chassis. Mostly because there's different layers of metal, there's reinforcement layers on the inside of it, there's also different thicknesses, there's thick, there's thin, there's bolts, there's nuts, there's everything just, you know, in these mysterious places that you usually kind of encounter when you're, when you're slicing through with a plasma cutter. So, sometimes it makes it difficult to use one and other times you just kind of have to 
improvise or figure out another way to cut something. But with the Cutmaster 60i, I didn't have any of those problems, and there's actually uh, a big reason why I didn't encounter those. But regardless, every single thing was nice and smooth the entire way through. It just flat out cut. It's as easy as that. Now I really can't lie to you guys about this. As soon as I cut up that car and I was done with it in almost what seemed like a record time compared to all the other cars that I've cut up over the years, I was pretty much sold on it. What really sold me was the long arc. The long arc was the ridiculously long arc length that it actually comes off of the plasma cutter, meaning that it will slice through multiple layers of sheet metal. Any other plasma cutter that I've ever used to do that with means that you had to cut out large panels, you had to find that there were more layers underneath in most unitized chassis as they are, or you just have to make an initial cut and then chase the rest out with a saw. In this case, the long arc went through every single piece of metal that I threw at it beautifully, and it really earned its nickname as the Beast. I'm not going to lie, I was sold. However, you probably would not just want to take my word for it, so let's go through the rest of the testing on this one and put all of those claims and all of those features and specs to the test here on some seriously, seriously thick, almost unrealistically thick metal and see what it does. Now I've seen a handful of plasma cutting review videos over the years and most of the time they uh, slice up some 8th inch steel so let's keep to that one but in this case the only reason why I'm showing you some 8th inch which we know it can do is because it demonstrates how crispy and clean that arc is because my hand is ridiculously unstable. What I'm more interested in is the ratings on this one so 5 8 is the thickness that it can pierce through so let's test this one out. We'll set the torch up. Pull the trigger, boom! Wait for it, get a little slow-mo here. Right through it, just like nothing. Now we'll get back into some real time, and of course and it can pierce through it, so let's just see how it cuts through it. I'm just gonna slowly work my way through this. Doesn't seem to have a single problem with any of it as I go along here. And of course, you know these are getting pretty hot because they're all individual eighth inch coupons, but you know, it's, uh, it's slicing. There's absolutely no problem with it. Really impressive. We'll take a look at the cut here, actually. Look at that. Aside from that big blob of snot right on top of it, it sliced through it nice and clean the whole way through. Now, maximum severance is an inch and a half, so one inch block down below, half inch block welded to it. We'll pull the trigger. Kaboom! Let's see if it can make it through this. Now, this did take a little bit of time. We're going to make you watch all of it, but it definitely definitely carved its way through that that's really impressive I mean as soon as I got done I was a little bit lost for words holy showing some of the results on this one here is an inch and a half severed with that torch that's really impressive that big blob in the middle there that was actually my torch angle but it definitely made it through without any hassles now onto some gouging. The reason why I actually welded that half inch plate to the top of the one inch plate is so I can gouge it back out. Now, I didn't have a shot of the weld before. It was just a big fat gnarly MIG weld to hold everything in place. So I'm gonna chase it out with a plasma cutter here just for some realistic uh, arc gouging on say an old weld. And look at that, it doesn't even exist. I could probably just pop it off with a hammer at this point. I mean, it's that's pretty impressive. I really liked how smooth it was. Now, I gotta check out some of this slag. I saw a, a, a post once about how the slag just easily chips off, so I'm gonna gouge it in totally the wrong direction and spray it everywhere, and we'll just see how easy it comes off. A couple chips with a screwdriver, not even a hammer, a screwdriver, just scrapes right off. How could that possibly be? So, let's just use it in the normal parameter, and we'll actually go forward in the correct gouging angle. Uh, with about 35 degrees or so on it, and we'll just blast it right out. Now this is a little bit less than impressive to look at because there's not really a whole lot of slag, but whatever slag and dross is still attached to it, just scrapes right off. Goodbye, no more. Pretty simple. For the sake of being thorough, I'm going to do it again. Just to show you. This is going to be a little bit sped up here. Piece of cake. We'll scrape that one off as well. No problem. Now my cameraman totally screwed up and pressed the wrong button when I actually uh, ran that face off of there, the, the front side that you can see, so I'll just gouge out the side here once again, throw a fat bevel on it, slice it away. This time I had to give a little bit of a chip on it, which I just smacked it with a screwdriver, but comes right off. Piece of cake. This thing is insanely cool. Look at these gouges. They're super clean. 
Like, really detailed, very easy to clean up too. I mean, I really like that. Well, speaking of likes, here's another one. We'll get into the likes about this machine, followed by the dislikes. Now this, you see the blinking light that's coming up there? That is your end of life indicator. A really, really cool feature that the machine automatically detects and tells you when it's time to replace your consumables. And speaking of consumables, they're right on top of the machine, all listed out every single part number you need, just for anything that you ever have to replace. I mean, that is extremely convenient. Now I mentioned earlier that I really like that quick release that's attached to the front of the machine for the leads. That's really fantastic, but it gets better. The torch itself is also a quick release from the lead. Now what this basically translates to was my biggest gripe about having a plasma cutter in the past. When it comes to replacing parts, if you need a new torch, just buy the new torch head. That's all you gotta get. If you need a lead, just buy the lead. That's it. As far as consumables go, there's only three consumable parts that you have to worry about replacing. And that's it. This is fantastic. Now like with many other machines, there's almost always a gripe. Something I'm not really fond of. That fan is extremely friggin' loud. It just runs. And it runs. And it runs. You know what, I'll be honest, yeah, it's nice to have that safety feature to make sure that it doesn't overheat or do anything like that, but man, there's gotta be a way to make that thing quieter. I just wanna put it outside when I use it. But the cool thing about that is, you could put it outside because it's actually rated for that, but oh my gosh, I think they probably could have made it just a little bit quieter because in a small space, like my shop or somebody's home garage or something, that's gonna drive you mad quickly. So. If you are gonna use it and the loud noise bothers you, stick it outside, it can handle it there. So there you have it. This machine has definitely earned its reputation for being the beast, and it's definitely gonna stay you know, somewhere on my shelf and uh, plugged in for the majority of the amount of time. Now, I'd definitely like to thank Aesop for sending this out for us to test it out. This is a really fantastic machine, and if you're anything like me and how I used to feel about plasma cutting systems, this is the one that you need. It's definitely, definitely an awesome machine. So, if you got any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down in the comments box below. You can also get in touch with us on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator, or Facebook.com slash TheFabricatorSeries. Now, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell because we have some really awesome stuff going on in the YouTube community tab that you definitely want to be a part of. I'd like to thank you guys for watching as always, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Where am I going to put this?